Hello and welcome back uh, to the second week of this course and uh, we are on the second module now. We had the first module prior to this uh, for the second week where we looked at uh, the risk assessment, the basics of risk assessment. We also, I gave you some examples of how the risk assessment is, take, is done. So today we'll look at, uh, see if you remember from yesterday we were talking about things being toxic, things being, uh, being harmful to the environment, harmful to the human beings. So today we'll be looking at the basics of uh, what is the toxicity, what, what is the, so the, as you probably know, uh, this toxicity aspect is covered in a course called toxicology. So I'll give you a very brief overview of toxicology so that you are on the same page of what we have been talking about risk assessment and how that relates to the overall life cycle analysis. So let's look at the basics of toxicology. So when we say toxicology, there are of course certain definitions. It's a study and science of poison. So it's a study and, and you may have heard in the past that uh, even Hitler was poisoned by arsenic and you hear from time to time certain people was poisoned and I'll give you some examples of that as well. So it's a study and science of poison. What are poisons? Poisons are chemical that has adverse health effect. So when we, have, when we talk about adverse effect means it's something uh, the effect is harmful. It's a something which is going to do bad to us as human being, it could do bad to the water, to the bad to the soil. So those are uh, the term, the, these are essentially chemicals and they will have some adverse effect. One of the common adverse effect will talk about death and there could be other uh, effect as well. It could be just your impairment of eye, impairment of one particular organ or somebody getting uh, some sort of uh, damage to certain parts of the body, not able to perform their function up to their 100 percent potential. So it's an adverse effect. It decreases the fitness of an organism and it also can have ability to, it, uh, how it affects uh, the, the fitness, it can affect the abil ability to survive, some cases even to reproduce. These days as you hear many places, uh, like if you, if you follow newspaper, you may have seen that uh, we talk about people are having reproductive problems. So, like many, many couples, they want to have child, but they're not able to have child. And we, even then when they have had child, because of certain uh, environmental impact, certain of the environmental contamination, especially uh, with uh, very unknown, unknown chemicals. When I say unknown chemicals, means the chemicals which, for which the impact is not known. We had the issues of uh, during the Iraq war, uh, the war is still wrapping up. There are places in Iraq, Fallujah and other places, where the kids were born with lots of deformities. Uh, in few years back, we heard that in even in parts of uh, uh, Bihar, in the state of uh, Bihar, the state of India, where we had uh, several childs born with uh, uh, like blindness. So it's of course there is something which is causing uh, this kind of impact. So those are the poisons. Sometimes we know that chemical, sometimes we don't know the chemical. So toxicology, as you can see on the last bullet uh, of this uh, of the slide. Toxicology is the study of the red, red color bullet that you see on the slide. It's the study of how chemicals reduces an organism's ability to survive and reproduce. So that's the big picture toxicology. And uh, we will be in this particular uh, segment of the video, this in this particular module, we'll give you a very brief overview of what toxicology is, especially uh, those of you who are from the biology background have taken biology courses for you. Most of these material may you have already may have covered in some other class, but those of you, especially the engineers, uh, we, we don't read that much biology. So for us, uh, this will be uh, kind of a, for the students of uh, engineering background or uh, non-biological science background, this will be a ready kind of reference when we talk of different uh, terms. So when we look at the toxicology, of course, there are different de definitions out there. There are different uh, terms. One term is toxicant. Toxicant is, and then you see those red, red color bullet, red color uh, 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 phrases are the different terms which you hear a lot. And then I've tried to explain it what it is means. So toxicant is a toxic substance, which is a man-made or results from human activity. So we call them anthropogenic. Even if you remember from the previous uh, video, we define this term anthropogenic, anthropogenic and biogenic. Biogenic is something which is natural. Anthropogenic is something which is man-made. So if you are man-made, especially say after World War II, we are making lots and lots of chemicals, organic chemicals, we are producing chemicals, and many of these chemicals, we don't know their environmental impact. What will happen to them when they are exposed, when they get released into the environment? So toxicant is a toxic substance that is man-made, 
or results from human activity. So, because of our activity that gets produced. Toxin is a substance which is produced by a living organism. So, many times uh, you do hear that uh, certain, uh, certain product from the forest or certain, product, certain plant species are toxic. Uh, they have some adverse health impact and that is what uh, those are actually already there. It is uh, it's produced by living organisms and, uh, and they are uh, named as toxin. And, and then the, in terms of the impact, so this toxicant and toxin are the type is basically is classifying the type of chemical. Either it is a man made chemical, man made chemical becomes toxicant or if it is an or like a chemicals produced by living organisms which is coming from a natural sources that is the toxin. Now, in terms of their impact, we have three terms for that in terms of the impact that is coming out and the terms uh, as you can see from the slide, the terms are acute, chronic and latency and we will go one by one on each one of them. Acute means sing, short single exposure, like you just had exposure for a very small period of time. So, you walk into a, a room, the room had uh, hydrogen sulfide gas or the chlorine, chlorine gas being, being uh, leaked into that room, you just walked in, you realized that you came out. So, that is your short single exposure. So, that is uh, your acute impact. Chronic is something where you have a long continuous or repeated exposure. So, you are working in a factory setting 8 hours a day or you, you are, uh, you see there is something releasing into your house. Many of the houses uh, we do not see that much issues of radon in India, but uh, uh, recently I was talking with, with one of the colleague and uh, we are, they, he was suggesting that there are cases of radon even showing up in Indian houses. But if you are in certain parts of say North America, especially Tennessee, that West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, those areas, they have the problem of radon. And if they have a basement, which many of those houses have because of some other reason. So, the basement, they do keep on testing for radon. So, say for example, if you have rented a basement apartment in that area and there you are exposed to this radon day in and day out, maybe say 8, 16 to 18 hours per day, where, what, what like amount of period that you spend inside your, inside your room. So, that is your long, continuous and repeated exposure. So, that kind of exposure we will call chronic. Similarly, factory setting, somebody working in a factory 8 hours a day, 5 to 6 days a week. So, that is again long continuous as well as repeated exposure. So, that is your chronic uh, part. So, acute was short single exposure, chronic is long continuous exposure. Then the third uh, impact term, the last one uh, on the slide is latency. Latency is the time between exposure and response. It's, it does not let us say if you get exposed to a certain chemical on, to, on today and it does not mean that you will get sick just to right now. For some chemicals, yes, you may get sick immediately, but for many, many, many of these uh, toxicants or toxin, it takes a long period of time. It may take few days to few weeks to sometimes few years or to sometimes even to few decades because if you, it takes time for you to have a response in terms of whether you get uh, whatever, whatever kind of impact you have on your uh, body or if you are talking about the environmental impact. So, there are that is the latency period, it is the time between the exposure and the response. So, these uh, five uh, terms uh, make sure you kind of understand this and uh, you remember because we will be using this again later into the, into the class. So, what is toxic? Everything is toxic, it depends on what concentration you take it in. If there is a famous quote, a famous quote which says that all substances are poisonous there is none which is not a poison, the right dose differentiates a poison from a remedy. Think about arsenic, we, we are still like I am like, uh, talking to you from uh, West Bengal, West Bengal and Bangladesh, we have a, there are certain districts in West Bengal and there are a big area in, West, uh, in Bangladesh where we are dealing with this arsenic poison. Similarly, part of West Bengal is also dealing with the fluoride issues. So, arsenic and if you are, if you have uh, looked at this homeopathic medicine or even some of the allopathic medicine, the, we use arsenicum in uh, the, if you are familiar with the homeopathic medicine, you will see a arsenicum. So, arsenicum means that there are little bit of arsenic there. So, on one hand we are using arsenic as a, as a remedy, as a medicine, 
but at the same time we have the arsenic poison issues from our ground water or surface uh, mostly from ground water in parts of West Bengal and uh, in a big chunk in uh, Bangladesh. So again it kind of if you go back to the quote all the substances are poisonous there is none which is not the right dose differentiate a poison from a remedy. So when we are trying to use it as a remedy we are using it at a very low concentration but when it becomes a very high concentration it becomes bad for us. So that is uh, same thing if you think about chromium. So chromium uh, if you if you are going to get a multivitamin uh, which many of us take uh, even when you are taking some antibiotic drugs uh, the doctor will prescribe you some multivitamin with that. If you look at the content of the multivitamin you will see it will have some chromium. So chromium but that is the oxidation state of 3. So chromium with the oxidation state of 3 we use it as a we, we use that element in our body we need that as a as a multivitamin as a source of multivitamin for our 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 growth but if you have too much of a chromium if uh, it becomes a problem so it becomes a even a carcinogen actually chromium 6 too much chromium at any oxidation level of 6 it becomes a carcinogen can cause cancer some of the examples of what are, what are to toxic like DDT, DDT we use a lot uh, for uh, spraying and taking care of uh, uh, like a mosquitoes and other pests but at high concentration it is toxic. Lead again it uh, where if the concentration is high enough becomes a problem. Even oxygen you think about oxygen which we need for inhaling and we for our respiration. We need ox without oxygen we will die but having a if you have too much oxygen also it will become a problem because if you have too much oxygen your body cells will get start getting oxidized. That is why many times you hear the term uh, if you like an antioxidant you will see that this acts as an antioxidant. Antioxidant means whatever is the free radical of oxygen present in our body this uh, particular uh, L this particular compound will go and uh, like uh, take those uh, free oxygen and take it out of the system. So that is uh, your antioxidants. So if you have too much of a oxygen if we inject too much oxygen in anybody anyone's body the person is also going to possibly going to die after if it goes too high. Then water if you drink too much of water that also is a problem but we cannot survive without water we need water all the time but having too much. So again having anything too much could essentially becomes a toxic so it depends on the difference between the dose. Uh, dose differentiates a poison from a remedy as you saw in that particular quote. Now, how you characterize this uh, toxicants or what are the toxicants how, how what we look at them. First of all if we are if we are going to get exposed it should be available in the environment is not it. It must be present in the environment then only we will get exposed. If it is not present in the environment say I am sitting in a room and that room does not have any of these toxicant I am not going to get exposed. So it to get exposed first of all it has to be in our environment it has to be in our surroundings. Then even if it is available in the surroundings it should be bioavailable bio -available, and some cases bioaccumulated. Bioavailable means that it should be say if uh, I give you an example for example say if you think of example of a copper in a water. If you have a lake or a pond and you have too much of copper present. So copper what happens is copper has a tendency to bind up with the organic matter. So when you look at any river or any, any lake or a pond you see that green color uh, in those uh, in this water. The green color essentially is the organic acids humic and fluvic acid. Copper any copper present it has a tendency to bound up with this organic acid. So there were, this is my copper this organic acids will make a layer on top of it. So now this layer on top any bacteria trying to come in because there is a layer on top this bacteria is not able to penetrate through this layer and my copper is there. but this is not available to the bacteria. So if it is not available to the bacteria it is not it will not be toxic to them because it, bacteria cannot get there. So if it cannot get there there will be no impact but if it is available copper at a very low concentration even at the microgram per liter even like in 1, 1 to 10 micrograms per liter concentration copper is toxic to certain aquatic species including fish and all that. So again since it was not bioavailable it is not toxic. So similarly if we ingest something say if we inject some chemicals by mistake but if does not if it is not bioavailable to our system if it cannot uh, our uh, our blood does not absorb that chemical it will just go out of our when we go to the toilet either through urine or the fecal matter things will go out of the system but we will not be it will not be toxic. 
So that's the concept of the bioavailable. It should be available to the species uh, which is getting exposed to that. Bioaccumulation is when it things gets accumulated in the food chain. We talk about uh, especially the mercury pollution. Mercury gets accumulated from the one species to higher species in water and uh, many times it comes to the fish. So that's why may we say that uh, pregnant women we try to avoid them uh, having too much of a fish because if especially if the mercury pollution is an issue in that area. Then uh, if it's even if it's a bioavailable it must interact at a molecular site. So it should do some type of uh, uh, interaction in our body. If it does not interact with the body system, whether I am talking about human body or animal body, any species body, whatever it is getting, whatever is getting exposed to, it has to interact with the body. If it does not interact, no reaction. So, no interaction means no reaction, no reaction means no negative impact. First reaction has to happen to have negative impact. Now, when it is react, next thing is it has to have some sort of metabolic dysfunction. So, it uh, has to create some sort of metabolic dysfunction then only it is harmful. If it does not create any dysfunction it is not harmful and then it must decrease the fitness of an individual organism. So, these are the one five point has is important then only things will uh, we will be a uh, toxicant will act as a toxicant otherwise it will not be there. So, if you look at the it is a not a very great picture, but uh, if you look at up close uh, uh, there is toxicology it is exposure, uh, exposure is important. Whatever I said in the previous uh, slide, it is kind of a summary of that. So, it is exposure and then from the exposure it has to be absorbed. So, things have to be absorbed at the port at the portal of entry, needs to be a distributed and then from the distribution it gets if it gets excreted that means it is not, not that much of a problem. But if it is metabolized to more toxic, met if it is meta the metabolism is happening to more toxic metabolites or if it puts some conjugation products or if they make less metabolic uh, toxic metabolites, then it gets distributed in the body, interacts with uh, protein, DNA, RNA and all that. Then there is a, it's, if it is our body will try to excrete it out. The kidney is our wastewater treatment plant as you know. Uh, so, that will try to excrete all these uh, like a bad stuff out of the body. If it can do that, then it is turned over and repair and goes to the excretion system and thrown out of the body. So, it may have little impact, but if cannot be if it cannot be removed by this uh, DNA, then it goes to this toxic impact where you can have a genetic carcinogenic tetragenic. So, those uh, impact comes in comes in picture. So, so that is uh, how this toxicology works. So, in terms of the toxicology first the things to come uh, where the things to come into the environment there has to be release, release of toxic material and this release could be either intentional release and legal release. So, intentional release is when say if you are burning many times you may have seen that people burn uh, uh, garbage along the side of the road. They will do the street sweeping, they will sweep the road, they will put it in a corner and then torch it. So, when you are torching it they are actually releasing lots of chemicals into the environment especially if you have plastics and other things present there you are getting a lot of you may have get pH polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon could potentially have some dioxins, furans and other things up there as well. So, that is the intentional release. Legal release is when you walk through any of this plant you see a big chimney uh, having all these uh, smoke coming out. So, this uh, smoke is although it may meet uh, the air pollution quality standard what whatever is needed from, from the uh, environmental protection agencies, but still there will be traces of these pollutant coming out. So, that is the legal release. Then you have uh, agricultural waste, uh, healthcare waste, industrial waste, solid waste all these things will have release of toxic chemicals and the adverse effect is the toxic response. Then other thing is very important is you look at the environmental fate. So, it is not only the things coming into the environment where it will end up, where it will end up we try, we try to find out with this three uh, concept one is what is known as the partition. Well, the partition means say if you have a chemical release take the example of a uh, truck carrying petrol for some reason gets in an accident and gets damaged on the side of an highway. Now, you have this petrol leaking from this uh, truck and getting into the getting into the surface. Now, part of it could stain surface could part become part of the become gets uh, mixed up with the soil. Part of it since the petrol is volatilized, so it can volatilize. So, a part of it can go into the air, part of it can also travel through the soil and potentially go into the ground water 
if there is a rain event part of it can mix with the rain and can go to the surface water. So, that is the partition. So, partition means what, what fraction of these chemical will end up where, whether it will be in the soil, whether it will be in the subsurface or the surface layer of the soil, whether it will go to the air, whether it will go to the water. And we need to be, because based on where they end up the exposure is different. So, we need to find out that. And the second part is the transport, like how these chemicals will move. Say if it is in the top surface of the soil, whether it will go through the soil layer, whether it will go into the subsurface. If it goes to the surface, subsurface easily, that means the more chances of groundwater pollution. If it does not go through the subsurface easily, then less chances of groundwater pollution. Also depends on how deep is the groundwater, what kind of soil we have in, the, in that layer. If the soil has too much of a clay or soil has too much of organic matter, where these chem chemicals may get bound up, we may not see that much of a uh, problem. Then transform. Transform is whether the chemical will transform to some other form after being exposed into the environment. Sometimes they get transformed into a more harmful chemical, especially TCE, tri trichloroethylene. When they transform into the environment, they produce uh, the daughter products are more dangerous than the original uh, TCE. So, this uh, slide kind of shows you the whatever I was trying to explain in the previous one, where it is an environmental fate, like things may move around. So, here if you look at, uh, if you have a chemical release and then the release uh, may have a, there is a vapor phase, depends on uh, whether if it is a vaporized, it can go into the vapor phase. There could be some dry deposition, it can go into the water, or in the water it can get dissolved, it could be in particle form, could be in collide forms then things may be taken up by other uh, species there and then it they, it they may excrete that as part of the fecal matter. The fecal matter may get deposited uh, into the sediments, then part of it could be taken up by other is, species which can go into the soil. So, these are how things can move around. Similarly, you may have uh, some of the like a, the uh, power plant things being released into the environment. So, these are uh, uh, like how things may move around, uh, sewage affluent here at the sewage treatment plant, the affluent from the sewage treatment plant. So, all these things kind of things moving around into the environment for different kind of uh, uh, chemicals. So, exposure, uh, exposure as we, one of the exposure is when, when we took a food and water. When you eat something, you are exposed to chemicals if you are eating that uh, food is contaminated. One expo other exposure could be the skin or dermal exposure, that outside that you touch pulmonary through the inhalation, through the inhale, when we take our uh, like a breathing, that is another uh, uh, like a exposure too, we can in, we can take some of these uh, air pollutants with that. And an injection, where you may have uh, ex injection experimental or accidental or intentional, if somebody is trying to harm you. So, that is uh, then in terms of the characteristics, if it is a large surface area, more the surface area, better is the reaction. And if it is a highly vascular, then it also leads to uh, those kind of uh, problem. So, and how the toxicant come out of our body? Through urine, through liver functions, through lungs function, through exhale, minor routes of elimination as part of sweat and other things, things also do come out. Then there are toxicology has to can bind up, which we were talking about earlier. So, it may interfere with the normal receptor, like a ligand interaction where the neuroreceptors, endocrine, enzyme transport, those things are taking into picture. There could be interference with the membrane function. You will have a neuromembrane or the cell membrane. So, they uh, becomes, uh, that is again a part of that. So, that is uh, your, uh, it interacts with the membrane function. There could be interferences with the cellular energy production. So, like uh, because of the oxygen transport, oxi oxidative uh, phosphorylation. So, that is where you interfere with the cellular energy production or even the binding with the biomolecules in terms of the enzyme lipid. So, there are different ways this toxicant can react with our body with the different cells or different uh, DNA and, uh, and other stuff that is present over there. So, in toxicology, one thing we talked about is exposure. The other thing is the response. So, response is either it can lead to death. Some chemicals do lead to death immediately. If you have, uh, like if you are familiar, if you remember, we had the issue of uh, a, uh, I would say terrorist organization in Sri Lanka, LTTE, which is uh, pretty much uh, wiped out now. We do not hear about LTTE anymore, but LTTE, which was Liberation Tiger of Tamil Elam. It is said that they, all the volunteers or all the people working uh, for LTTE, they used to carry a necklace uh, with a capsule of cyanide. So, if they are caught, they will eat that cyanide and they will die immediately. 
So they don't want to be caught because if they are caught, they may release some of the secrets of the organization. So to avoid that, and of course they will be tortured. So they they, they avoid all that. They just take those uh, cyanide capsule. So that will lead to immediate death. Similarly, there was an incident in. Uh, in few years back in one of the universities in US, in Duke University, if I remember correctly, there was a lady who was working on in the lab and for some reason she just had a wrong set of gloves working with methyl mercury. Methyl mercury as you may have heard is highly, highly poisonous, highly toxic. So she had a wrong set of gloves, this methyl mercury passed through her the gloves into the skin and by the time the paramedics arrived, which in uh, US system does not take much time, although it was a Sunday. But uh, within, within 10, 15 minutes, she was gone. So that leads to immediate death. So some of the chemicals do lead to like a very quick response, but some takes a longer time. Oh, that depends on the latency period that we talked about earlier, but it may have an impact on the organ system. It can damage your tissue. It can lead to all different types of diseases. There could be other kind of impacts. You may feel dg. You may not feel like working. You get a headache. And uh, so those kind of things happens when you are, those are the type of response. Some of these response, our body has our own immune system. For different people, the immune system is different as I was trying to explain to you in the previous uh, module as well, that uh, it depends on how fit the person is. Sometimes uh, for the same kind of weather condition, one person may get cold, cough and cold and all that, but the other person may be just not get anything. So it depends on how good the body is in terms of taking, uh, uh, taking care of those kind of, uh, those kind of impact. So that's, uh, but our body can repair our itself. That's what uh, if you, uh, like when you go to sleep, uh, that's seven, eight hours that you sleep, a lot of cell replacement takes place. So your body uh, gets uh, like, a re they, they repair by themselves. And uh, they also, there are some connective tissues. Uh, so fibrosis, uh, that's those things that happens where things gets uh, repaired and replaced. So that then you may not see the impact. Uh, but uh, over the time, if, uh, if you get too much uh, exposure to those chemicals, over time, our body also kind of, uh, uh, it's basically kind of a fight between the body's re repairing system and this toxicant's uh, impact. If whichever wins, that kind of leads to that. As so, as we, get, as we get older, our immune system becomes weaker. Our body cannot repair itself that faster. So that's why we start seeing the impact of some of these toxicants coming in there. So in terms of the chemical toxicity, we talk about the toxicity to humans. Uh, we, some of these we talked about yesterday as well. We, like we look at the cancer impact and the non-cancer impact. Uh, so, and then uh, toxicity to the ecosystem, you can look at the impact on individual organisms. It could be the population level impact or it could be the community level impact. So individual organisms means that you, are, you have a toxicant, say for example, any toxicant which is uh, bad for aquatic species gets released into the uh, one pond or a river or a lake and then you see that a lot of fish has died or uh, a lot of other organisms uh, like a one particular kind of organisms are getting impact. So that will be individual organisms. So when you are looking at one particular organisms, when you are looking at multiple type of organism, that becomes your population level. So where you have uh, fishes dying as well as the other aquatic species are dying, you see the gro uh, reduction in the uh, like a growth of algae and all that. So it's a, it's a multiple, multiple species. So that's your po population level impact. Then we also see community level impact. One of the dominant one we see, we see these days is the impact on the honeybees. Uh, if, you have, if you follow the environmental news, you may have seen that we are, uh, because of the use of certain uh, pesticides, fertilizers, and those endosulfan and other kind of uh, uh, like if, uh, pesticides and fertilizer insecticides, we are seeing an impact of communities of community level B are disappearing, where bees are dying. So death of bees is a very, very uh, serious matter because uh, if the bee is not there, there will be no pollination. No pollination means no food. No food means we cannot survive for long. So if the bees are, if the bees are gone from this planet, it is uh, very sure that in few years down the line, the humans will start having a big impact as well because, because without bees, we cannot survive on this. So there are cancer and non-cancer. So we'll look at uh, many chemicals have been found to be human carcinogen. We already talked about arsenic, which uh, is a carcinogen, lung and skin cancer. Benzene is there, which is the blood, bone marrow cancer. Then hexavalent chromium also we talked about. It again causes lung cancer, vinyl chloride, liver and lung cancer. And these are just four examples. Uh, two organic, two inorganic, two organic. But 
there are a lot of other things are out there as well. So, cancer is a chemicals cause cancer in different uh, manners. The time between exposure of initiation of cancer can be large. It can be very, it can be very difficult to identify the cause of cancer. Say you are exposed to arsenic today and uh, say over a year period of one, one week you got exposed to a year period of one month you get exposed to arsenic, nothing happened to you. But 10 years down the line you may, you may diagnose with uh, say cancer. So, but it is very difficult to point point that the toxic exposure you had over a period of one month is the cause of the cancer because you are exposed to several other things uh, as well. So, the cancer causing agents are uh, usually we look at the incidence of population abnormally large concentration or we use it for the laboratory animals. So, that is uh, kind of uh, the, like if you look at the toxicology aspect, uh, some of these uh, were look we were talking about in the risk assessment as well, but especially for those of you who are non biology background, uh, we would like these terms are very important because when we are trying to look at uh, this whole environmental impact or life cycle analysis, what we are interested in, we are interested in to find out what is, what is the harm it is going to cause to us, to our plants, to our water, to our soil. And the harm is the toxic, toxicity aspect. So, if some if chemical is not, does not have any toxicity aspect, there will be no harm. So, understanding of this aspects is very important. So, we will continue this uh, con uh, discussion again in the next module and till then thank you.